Yeah. Okay. Now. Oh. You're good. You're good. I was just, I'm, I'm recording this session so that we can okay. turn around and use this and upload it onto our YouTube. So uh, hey. oh. let me. Uh, Are you still also on Facebook? Yeah, I'm going to. Yes, I'm going to get us going on Facebook right now. Okay, so you're recording. That's awesome. Yeah, because well, Facebook for a small, uh, for little minutes, for a little minute, they were letting you download the video. And then you could upload it onto YouTube. Well, they're not letting you do that anymore. So they don't like YouTube. They want you only on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so hard. That's why I have marketing people. I mean, it's it's just so hard to learn it. And then it, the minute I learn it, it changes. Yep. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> All right. Um Em, can you uh Emily, can you spell your name? Uh, e M I L I E. Okay. My last name F A N T U Z Z. F A N T U Z. Yeah. Okay. Santos. Uh, Peter says Z. He's my husband is British. Uh, and he, <laughs> he says Z as well. Instead of, do you, Michelle? Do you say Z <laughs> instead of Z? Z. Is it? Yeah. Is that no, no. Now it's asking us to click again. Yeah. Okay, we're on Facebook. Hello, everyone. We're on the Facebook. Okay. Yay. All right. So now it becomes a, let me get back on my Zoom. So I have real time so I can see you guys. Okay. All right. So we are two minutes in, but we're going to start a little early. Welcome everyone to live in the studio with, um, um, all of us. So my name is Maria and I'm the executive director at the Leesburg Center for the Arts. And with me is my co-host, uh, Arachme. She is a professional artist here in uh, the Central Florida area. And then we have Michel, who is our, he's our Einstein for art, our art oh, Einstein. Shit. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, you kind of like our I, art Einstein. Um, and then our special guest is Emily. And then Emily, you're going to say your last name because I'm not going to say that. Uh, Fantus. <laughs> Fantus. Okay. And Emily, you are in British Columbia. And uh, welcome. So essentially what we do here, and I know Arach may uh, probably give you kind of the overview, but it's just a really super chill um, program. We like to get to know the artists all around the world and we invite them to come and participate. It's, everyone's getting together and talking art and working in their studio. So my studio is a little, it's a little different because I don't have a permanent studio. I just kind of shift. So right now I'm in my office and it's wherever I can make room. And then Michelle, your studio is at home and Arachme studio is at home as well. So are you working from home? I am. Um, yeah. So I just moved into an artist live work space with my husband, who's also an artist. So our studio is basically 90% of the house and we have a small living area. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There you go. That's wow. awesome. What kind of work yeah, does your husband perfect. do, Emily? Oh, he's a oil painter as well. So like behind me, we're, we're getting oh, ready wow. for exhibition right now. So we have a lot of work that we've been doing for this whole past year. Um, and it goes out for the exhibition soon. It's in October. So um, he's doing, I hope you can see from here, but like aerial perspectives of Vancouver. And then I'm working on the street level perspectives. Oh, that's so very You cool. can see back there in that corner is some of his. And then um, the two, there's two big ones there in the middle and the top one's mine and the bottom one. So as so, you guys are collaborating then. Yeah, so, yeah. And we're, it's our first show together. So we're really excited to, to be able to kind of present our work together for the first time. So that's very uh, cool. That is very cool. That is wonderful. And a dream of many artists. My husband is an artist as well. And um, he went to art college in England and then, uh, but he's a musician. He's chosen the musical route. Yeah, so, but he does the photography for me, which you know as an artist is invaluable uh, because yes. um, you have to have good pictures. That's so, so true. Yeah, yeah. Mike, my husband, he does our photography, and it's kind of it is great to have 
as both of being artists that we can kind of divide and conquer some of those tasks <laughs> that are very important to the business or administrative side of things. Yeah. yeah, and you have to have so much dedicated to, um, I have a formula of two hours and two hours marketing or administrative, two hours education, and then the rest of the time to paint. But um, <laughs> do you have a formula as well? No, I don't have a formula. Um, I do find that my kind of mindset is prioritize painting because it's so easy to get caught up in all of the other tasks. Um, but I don't have a particular way I, I lay that out. Um, my schedule since I've moved to this new space has kind of changed a bit because it's a loft style and we're, we kind of work on a little bit of different schedules, but I prefer to paint first thing in the morning. And I feel like that time of day is when there's the least distractions and nothing has happened. Um, and then by evening, I'm more, a little more tired. So I feel like that's a better time for me to do the administrative work. Yeah, maybe I should shift my plan. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, but then you get those emails. I just got one that said, please send me that Dropbox link again. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I've sent it four times. Okay, I'll send it again. But then... <laughs> getting caught into that administrative and then you know of course when I went to sleep I said okay I'm going to get up 6 a.m I'm going to be painting and then mm -hmm. that didn't happen because the administrative came in and took yeah. over the time <laughs> you got to just turn off your notifications <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's hard to do yeah yes <laughs> so are you uh are you painting now in this in the studio or are you just I mean, what is the, okay, hold on. What is even the time there? Is it a different time? It's a different time zone. Um, it is. So specific. it's like we're three hours earlier. So I think it's about 7 a.m. here okay. now. Right. Um, it's so early. Just, yeah. 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 I just finished a piece and right. I'm actually getting ready to do my first mural. So um, I was just working on starting a maquette for that. So I'm not very far, though. All I've done is basically. There is. Where? I'm just getting canvas prepped and ah, getting ready to start my my drawing. So where is the mural located? Uh, West Vancouver. Um, okay. So I start working on that next week and I'm really excited. <laughs> do you have an idea of what it's going to look like? I do. So um, the site of the where the mural will be was in a location where there used to be a very beloved theater. Mm -hmm. uh, the theater is no longer there. So I used archival photos to find the building uh -huh. and it's going to be kind of a recreation of the theater at night in its glory with very uh, cool people, vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It's going to be very, very cool. <laughs> very cool. That's awesome. So I've been following Vancouver for a few years and noticed that in the last, well, I guess five to seven years, there was a huge population influx um yeah in, from uh well in a huge population influx so has that affected your uh your art career hmm. well i'm one of those influx people so i <laughs> came here um from michigan in 2017 so okay I'm going on five years here um and i was previously kind of in the outskirt suburbs of vancouver but we just moved into Vancouver last month. So oh, kind of so feels like we're starting a new chapter, actually being in the city, which is really exciting. <laughs> so yeah. and that's not inexpensive because I understand the property values have gone up quite a bit. Yeah, it's pretty expensive here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's good, but that's good uh, that you have a home, that you found a home that, that is large enough. For you to do your art in as well as live in yeah we feel really lucky because a lot of the properties i think this property was built in the 90s and it seems like the newer properties are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller so with both of us working as artists here and we like to work on rather large canvases we feel um, very fortunate to have found a space that will really allow us to work here properly <laughs> 
that's very cool. Yeah. That is very cool. You know that, uh, you know, Emily, when uh, Hong Kong closed for a while, they were thinking to change Vancouver for Hong Kover. Do you know that story? I don't. Oh, uh, yeah, well, because everybody from Hong Kong they, uh, just moved into Canada because we are Commonwealth. Hey, are, are you Canadian or, or as citizenship now? You still got your U.S. Mm -hmm. passport. I'm a permanent resident in Canada, okay. so I have not lived here long enough to become a citizen. Um, I do plan on on that when I'm able to, but for now, I'm a permanent resident. In Canada, it's it's a lot easier than than it is. Yeah. So, well, good. Anyway, so that's that's. Uh, sorry if I look like. For some reason, when I saw your husband's work, I had this blog called Artist of the Day, and I think. I did feature him a couple of months ago. I'm not too sure. That's what I was looking on the other. I have two screens. Oh, over here. like on a Instagram or? No, no. It's 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 a blog called Artist of the Day. It's for oh. educational thing. It's cool. like on a, it's like on a WordPress blog uh, platform. But he's been oh. uh, Michelle's been doing that for what? How many years now? Six, six, seven years, I think now. And he does an artist oh. of the day, and he's up to like seven thousand mm -hmm. uh, posts. I feel like oh my goodness yeah but what's really cool about it is it's it's he finds really unique artists that have a really compelling kind of journey and yeah. he started to feature an emerging artist segment of it so um but it's a really awesome it's, uh visual diplomacy dot blogspot yeah after our our call maybe we can put that in the comments or something yep. so you can check it yeah. out yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. but michelle yeah, you have I'm to sure figure michelle out if you will make a point to contact you yeah yeah but michelle you yeah. have to figure out if you wrote about it yeah we'll have to find that out <laughs> yeah well i that's what i tried to do and i'm sorry i'm looking at the second screen that is right next to it so it didn't look like and today oh good news i am working on concepts today so oh, okay. I'm I got a commission again. You did? Yeah, what last kind of, night when I came in, uh, this guy wanted to have a totem, but a little bit different. So we're like 42 inches high. Okay. So, so I'm okay. just checking all of my stuff and start to work on that on Monday or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So Michelle, do you want to show Emily something that you do? Because oh, she had, I, I told her. And I should, <laughs> oh God, my studio looked like, I. It, it's a disaster here. Uh, Okay. Wood. This guy here, I don't know if you can see it right. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Mm -hmm. Is that what is this made out of? Uh, these ones made out of wood. Okay. If I'm doing a big one, uh, because they're inside, if I do a big one, we'll probably work with uh, a fiberglass or aluminum. I'm not too sure yet. Um, so we were. We're in the process to try to have a, a 22 or uh, uh, eight meter high, oh, I'm 22 feet, whatever, I'm sorry, you from Michigan. <laughs> uh, in the, uh, we try to a lot to a uh, sculpture by the beach in, in uh, Sydney. Wow. That well, we're Canadian, <laughs> we can take advantage of that. Well, when you get there, you will part of the Commonwealth, so you can go to New Zealand, Australia, very easy anyway, but outside the point, I love your stuff. Talk to me about your stuff. You oh. painting it back. Um, yeah, so my current work has been based off of um, Vancouver where I'm at now, kind of exploring the city. Um, my work is all done in oil and all done with pellet light. So um, that's something that many people are surprised about because it's yeah. a lot of times pellet knife artists more impressionistic and my work has become more realistic. So that's kind of, so this is essentially what I've been, <laughs> been doing this year. The one, this big one here is a day scene, but typically I my work is more of a showing the city at night. I'm really interested in the light and how the light changes at night. Um, Vancouver has a history of neon so they used to be one of the, actually the neon capital of the world, believe it or not. And yeah, they wow. still, they went through a period where the city 
um, like started to ban it, feeling like it was bringing a bad vibe to the city. So a lot of the neon is now gone, but it's kind of making a bit of a revival. And so in some of my work, I focused on kind of finding the neon that remains and, and yeah. painting that. It's so interesting. <laughs> that yeah. happened in Tampa as well. It, oh yeah. It, it, when it was building, I was there, part of that building. And it, um, and it started to get the neon signs, which are easier to make uh, and less expensive. So there were more and more, and then they put a stop to it. So I wonder if that will be revived as well. You know, what happens in one place happens in another. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is they, they're, it's kind of, it's hard to find people now who, who know how to do it still, right? Because it's an art and, um, the, like they're all made by hand and mm -hmm. you have to know how to bend the glass properly. And um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're, they're really cool and they are making a comeback. It's all over. Yeah. You know, it's got a little bit of nostalgia. I can't help it. So mm -hmm. are you finding, um, cause if that's your subject matter, are you, um, do you have pieces that are a little bit more uh grungy where it's not them at their it's not it's not them at the uh, it's not like neon lights at their best right it's them broken or it's uh, oh, um yeah maybe i can like walk you around a little bit so yeah um love that. I'll, tr I'll try that let me just because I, I always find that interesting as well as like when you're telling a story and with paintings it's we always like the the really fun like oh this is a success story this is stuff at its at, at its best yeah. right but so yeah okay it's kind of tricky to to do this but um so like this piece wow. you can see there this one i was really pleased with how the neon came out so the the word paint is actually in real life not entirely illuminated only okay. The first three letters so I I decided to correct this and fix it and turn it all on in my painting um but then behind you see the word Astoria hotel yep. and half of hotel is burnt oh. out um and I, I did leave it that way um and then I'm gonna walk you to another piece of over here so this piece is Let's see here. I should have tried to figure out if I could switch my camera around. That would help. Um, I don't know if I can though. I don't know how to switch it. Okay. So we can kind of see there. Yeah. So this piece is of Granville Street, a famous street in Vancouver, where there's still a lot of old neon signs, but this one, I actually, I actually learned ah, very <laughs> um, how to do it, which was it's a difficult process. Oh so, God! Yeah, so a little abstract neon in the piece was kind of fun. Yeah, um, and with that, I I learned that. So I really learned the appreciation for how much goes into it because it's I I when I had this idea I thought that that big swooping shape would be probably easy to yeah. just oh it's one simple shape but I discovered <laughs> that it's not <laughs> and I broke lots of glass and um oh, so you did it yourself you didn't run to a neon shop I went to a neon shop and they were really gracious and walked me through the process because I kind of wanted to get a sense of it for myself instead of just hiring somebody to make it um, so they walked me through it and kind of explained the process and I got to learn, uh, you know, how, how it's done. Um, and I learned that actually the smaller, tighter shapes, which might look more difficult, are a little bit easier to make than the wide swooping shapes because uh. you're, you're bending glass. So yeah. you're heating up and then you have to really quickly transfer it onto your shape or your stencil and it hardens so fast um yeah. and you're trying to move this molten yeah. glass and not let it droop or 
misshapen. <laughs> and you don't want that if it's also smashed with each other because you get almost yeah. liquid. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very cool. And so this will be on display when? I know you were saying that. Yeah, um, October October 2nd through the 30th is our exhibition. It's at a gallery here in Vancouver, um, Ian Tan Gallery. Okay. Now, do you usually, is that how you're um, getting your work out there is through gallery shows and ex uh, exhibitions? Yeah, um, so I work with Ian Tan Gallery here in Canada, and then I work with uh, River's Edge Gallery in Wyandotte, Michigan. Um, so they, they show my work. And I also have, um, my husband and I, we have our new home studio open for appointments. So uh, okay. we oh, like good. To in and yeah, which is really nice. That's but you're cool. in a commercial district. Your home is yeah. in a district. Yeah, so it's, it's actually zoned live work and it's, um, it has a commercial kind of front to it. So we're able to to be open to the public. Um, but right now we're just choosing to be by appointment. That's the best of both worlds there. That's one. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we had a guest artist um, uh, during the art talk last night, Justin Alsdick, and he uh, has opened up a, a gallery in a neighboring town, downtown Ocala. And his studio is also in the space. I, I think he would totally love that kind of situation where he could live yeah. and have, you know, studio space and a gallery really space. Important, yeah. Thing. yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of towns and cities that offer that to artists to help utilize that as an economic driver. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way to get it going, you know? So. Wow. so really, I, uh, oh, uh, where were you when you were in Michigan? Uh, Oh, so I grew, I grew up in South Lyon, which is about 30 minutes outside of Ann Arbor. Oh, okay. Um, oh, so you were South. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because yeah. in Detroit, I don't know where it is now, but in Detroit, it will help us, help all of the artists to move there because, you know, it's just kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And they will almost pay for the studio and it's a work and live, a uh, huge loft. And, and I was just like, ooh, winters are tough, but... <laughs> Yeah, I we my husband and I were just visiting recently actually and we were like, yeah, but there would be some really great artist spaces there for sure. <laughs> it, it's kick, it's kicking on that way, so that's wonderful. My brother lives in my it still lives in Michigan. We we were from Toledo, Ohio originally. <laughs> so he stayed and he lives in um, Michigan where it, where he works is an environmental i'm sorry he's an electrical engineer so oh, okay. um, so he works there at his own company that's yeah. and the whole family they love the cold it, they <laughs> love the change of season so it wouldn't yeah. even dawn on them to to move to where we live with which is a hot climate <laughs> all yeah. the time you know and, i think in the winter there's more people from michigan here than there in the state of michigan and everybody uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah i'm wondering why uh maybe the um, the glorious the, weather the, the glorious weather um all right so next question what is your easiest way of uh marketing your work or what is, what's, oh no, not easiest. What's the most successful way that you found to market your work? I think the most successful has been, I would say Instagram. Um, really? Yeah, I feel like with Instagram, it's, I, I was trying to toss that between Facebook, but um, I think Instagram is where you're more, able to reach a wider audience it feels like facebook is a little more difficult um to grow or you kind of kind of have its bubble and it's hard to break out of that yeah um yeah so i would i would say instagram that's actually how my husband and i met um was uh -huh. through instagram through a hashtag oh, really? yeah because we both paint with Pell and i so we were using that and we met through that um, but the it's match that come doesn't work anymore, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we, um, and then so uh, the gallery that we work with here, they reached out through Instagram, and it feels like a lot of opportunity has come through that for us. Yeah. Um, 
And I, and I agree with your statement because Facebook is is very um, it's layers of an onion, right? So it's like you continuously have to peel, and then it they restructure every six months of how they're going to put the like with the algorithms and how you can share and get your work out there. So it becomes if you're doing it yourself, you have to spend the time to re-educate yourself on how and, and what way is the best way to do that. Whereas Instagram. I don't, I don't think they've clogged, clogged that up. It's hashtag driven. It is, um, it is a great way to connect with people and the, the visibility of Instagram is different. Like you said, I mean, it's a wider network yeah. because it's based on the hashtag more than mm -hmm. it is on the, um, friend base. Yeah. That, is just, that is going to change very rapidly with the augmented reality that's coming, the new yeah. technology. So you know, it's, it, we don't know what's going yeah, on. No, happen. I agree. Um, there was an article written a couple months ago where, you know, TikTok is now a rival for both Instagram and Facebook, a huge one. Mm -hmm. And oh, really? yeah. And so what Instagram is doing is, um, I don't want to say rebranding themselves, but in a way they are so that they would mirror how TikTok the videos are and how they scroll and everything and how they categorize so that they can start essentially stealing those people back um, mm -hmm. into Facebook. So that's why they have the reels and the story, like the, the movies and all the other stuff. So I, I'd be interested to see if that actually follows through and if that's successful because- and Facebook said they are really gonna focus on the new where they have already been focusing on the augmented yeah. reality. So, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a whole nother world of it makes digital look like nothing. Right. So yeah. now it, it's an interesting concept. I'm wondering, you know, Vancouver has that really huge uh, art fair that goes on. And are you in involved in those which are more not more like exhibitions or more like fairs or like expos? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not involved in any art fairs um, as of now. Um, mostly just you know working with the gallery and then um, interested in having this nice studio more available to meet with clients. Yeah. So, yeah. And, that's, and a, like, it's a, that's a different world. Yeah, and the, my work takes quite a long time. So I'm only able to produce, um, I mean, it depends. Like some of my pieces take over a month for a single painting. So um, I, and, you know, I have, I do as much as I can, but I don't have, yeah. you know, I only have so much work available. So yeah, that's yeah, and the galleries that. do the expos and the fairs, so we don't have to do those anymore. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Instagram is is great, uh, but it's a lot of hustling. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I I you have to do that like two three times a day. It's almost um, a full time job. Instagram, um, I think you. I, I know, like. A lot of people recommend you post so much and you do so much and it is too it, it can be um it is a lot of work so i i don't follow those recommendations i just i try to be posting you know once a week and yeah update them oh, okay. but i it's yeah if you focus too much on it it can take over <laughs> yeah it'll take over yeah and and yeah and yeah, so were you that. always painting um, with palette knife? Yeah. Um, so I've been painting with palette knives for about 10 years. Um, and that's really where I feel like I started. So prior to that, it was just more little experimentations with different things, but not really any focus. So yeah. once I started working with palette knives, I feel like that was really the start of like my art career and working as an artist. And I've, over the, over this past 10 years, my work has changed a lot. And um, I used to work with larger palette knives doing work that was more abstracted. And now I'm working with a very small knife and, and enjoying the details and, and the realism. That's very cool. And then when did you start painting? When? Yeah. Um, so. The, Let's see, about 2011, I 
and 12. Okay. So it's been, it's been 10 years. Yeah. So did yeah. you um so did you go to school for art or did you just kind of like a self discovery? Yeah, I didn't study. I did not study art formally. Um, I consider myself more of self self taught. Um, a lot of trial and error and a lot of a lot of practice. <laughs> I actually just wore out a palette knife for the first time, so I've been using the same one basically to produce this entire show, and. I didn't realize it until till recently, but I've actually worn the whole side down. <laughs> so it's a totally, it's a totally different shape. Um, it, it, but now it's gotten nicked, so it, it's it's I can't use it anymore. Yeah. But I discovered I actually really liked the shape that it wore into, and there happens to be a someone here who makes custom palette knives. So oh, oh right. very nice. Um, so oh, cool. <laughs> He's gonna make me one in this worn down shape, so I'm excited for that. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's yeah. very cool. All right. now, I, I, did you get? I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, did you get good. any architectural background or anything like that? Because I look at your perspective; it's perfect. You know, and it's oh. and, and, and your refraction, the flights, uh, like the first one you show, you see these little spot in the car that was parked. Man, it's right on, right on, right on, right on. So I'm very, very, very impressed with that. Do you really know what you're doing? Yeah, I don't have any any background in that way. Just honestly, it's just so much time um, and so many, so much trial and error, really. And I think the past year and a half, actually, with the pandemic, my art has grown a lot in this time um, because being so distraction free. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You realize, like. I guess now, well, things were kind of opening up here, but now they're not. But as soon as they were, those distractions start coming in and it's sort of like, okay, like you can see how this little things here and there just take your time. Yeah. Um, but having that whole period there with um, being at home and not going out and not seeing anybody and just becoming totally even more obsessed with painting it's really um it's really helped my work grow so it's a silver lining for me wow. <laughs> you know when 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 you start at the beginning without this i look and I say, wow she's a great photographer so I say, that's not a photo it's beautiful work i mean uh, i'm very very impressed thank you thank you <laughs> yeah so uh Arachmi, what are you doing oh i had um remember that piece that i've been working on so it had a lot of geometric shapes. So what I've done, I'm working with coal wax and oil. I pre-mixed my, um, an overall color, you know, like a lighter blue. And um, so I had to put it, it it's, it's just another layer, but right now I have, you can see that I have connected the dots. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, so right there on the top, I made, I see that I'm losing, losing the, I just got to add a little blue to that, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to pull that together. And these are just smaller moves now, now that I've moved out, I'm into uh, fine tuning what I've done, but I'm not close to stopping, but you see how I was losing the the view, so I had to add that little bit of area. I'm gonna let that dry, and because it's cold wax, it'll dry. And I, I did, um, I used a lot of white this time, so it's more opaque. It, because if you can't see it because you're not up close, but through all these other layers, there's several transparent layers that are are visible. So that's where I'm at right now. So I'll let that dry in a week from now. <laughs> I will do more on that. That's that's what I'm working on. And I'm going to be teaching that in the fall. And I realized that I am putting all my paintings that I've done prior to this with the coal wax and oil in, in, in an exhibition. So when I hang that, I won't have anything to show the students as to what could happen in the end. 
<laughs> so now I'm gonna, and the one behind me is coax and oil too. So, um, but anyway, so I'm happy. Now I'm happy that I was really struggling with that for about a month. And now it, it feels like there's been a breakthrough. Yes, sometimes you have to uh, yeah. sit and digest for a couple of weeks just to. Uh, well, with cool wax, you gotta let it in oil. You gotta let it dry because you don't. It 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 keeps changing as it's drying. So as, acrylic cha changes as it dries, but it gets just gets darker. And then oil, you know, it has its own. It has its own characteristics. But coal wax and oil has a whole nother set of characteristics. So it's just knowing what's going to happen. Like your daughter said, his daughter is a one, oh, beautiful artist. And she, and the one thing that she said that has stuck in my, my brain, she's been on a few times, um, is to say, it re it's really important for her to know, or, or wait, she had that, she had a change and we talked about this last night as to changes in your life change is are the emotional changes in your art as an artist and for her there was a moment when she felt more confident because she knew what was going to happen yeah. with the mediums and materials the techniques that you use to know what's going to happen next that there there it took a lot of the surprise out of it of course, that's a thin line to walk because you don't want to ever lose that sense in abstraction. You don't want to ever lose that sense of surprise or that, um, you know, uh, for a period of years, what do they call them? Happy accidents, you know, yeah. but, but in this case, it, with the coax and oil, you have to be, you have to be a little more, you have to know a little bit more as to how the medium works. You have to know oil. How, what medium are you using, Emily? I'm using oil as well. Oh. Yeah, probably in your case, case is the best thing to do because yeah. you need the times to make your mix and so on. Hey, but you, okay, now, Emily, you start with a photo. Mm -hmm. You go and shoot it. And after that, what happened? Do you sketch it before or you just go straight for it to paint right away on your canvas? Yeah. I sketch it before and I just started doing some sketching on the iPad, which is very new. I'm enjoying that though, because oh. you can erase things perfectly and you can kind of work things out, um, which is kind of fun. So that's how I plan for this mural is to sketch on the iPad. So I'm really excited to oh, wow. make that more. Um, I'm using a program called Procreate and I'm, I feel like that's something I'd like to keep using um, maybe with my other work. Um, and then when I'm painting, I'm painting um, a la prima and I'm con completing each section as I go. So I'm not working in layers. I'm going right for it. <laughs> okay. You're working, so you have very, um, well, you have to with realism, don't you? Yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole different world. And then the working with the palette knives because there's a bit of texture. So um, I'm kind of, for example, like with a piece with maybe cobblestones or brick sidewalks. So painting the bricks and then while the paint is wet, going through on the edge of the palette knife and kind of cutting through that to get like the lines in between the bricks. So kind of completing each piece as I go. So your pieces are a combination of a of a flat surface that when you're done and a and a textured surface. Yeah. They, yeah. I wish I could. It's hard to show in video. Um, it is. Yeah. But yeah, there is texture to them. Okay, that was a good explanation of how you're using the palette knife because yeah. I was I was having a little hard time figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and I I've, I've learned over this last while about, um, I do try to vary, like vary the texture within the piece. So I'm able to do the sky or the street very smooth and very uh, blended. And then in other areas, deliberately put a little bit more texture. So often the people that are in the work, there's more texture to them and things like brick or yeah. uh, 
like well, cold. Do you think you will see the day where you will be doing all dry, meaning from your iPad? So you said this is the final product. Do you think, are you getting close to that? Do you think you will ever want to be on that? Where you don't use a canvas anymore, the only mm -hmm. canvas you have is your iPad or- is No, no, <laughs> I'm not interested in that. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I just, I love actually the physical products and the paints and the tools. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like it's a, a way of doing because I have a whole bunch of illustrators and that's what all they do now. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I think it's quick and also it's for publishing. So yeah. most of the time, so you don't have to paint it, scan it, and mm -hmm. doing this, and now it's everything is in there, but it's kind of a, wow, it's impressive. It's very, it's very powerful what you can do on it. Um, it is still new to me, so I know I'm not using it to its potential, but um, I think it's definitely an interesting tool. Um, and then I was just traveling recently, and just to have, even just to have something where you could easily draw and practice it and have it small and light and you don't have a bunch of supplies. It's just very convenient. I, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I have a, I should call the shock of the future. Um, I used to do, well, when I was in Miami a long time ago, I used to do these humongous shoes, but very distortionated and very, very pop art type of stuff. And, and it, was, it was a long, long process way to go. Uh, first, you get a plaster, after that, you do the fiberglass, and after that, you send and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Now, I can do on a 3D program, I can do the shoe. I can yeah. send for the uh, 3D printers that would be half the size. And I got this shop in Miami that they will do enlarge it and give me the mold for the fiberglass. And I don't mm -hmm. even have to touch anything anymore. And it's kind okay. of... Uh, Okay, I won't have to wear a mask anymore because it was so toxic with the fiberglass and everything else. Mm -hmm. But where are we standing in there? You know, I'm, I'm kind of a, I question it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're going to be able to take, and you're, you're going to be able to take um, furniture and place it in, well, you can already do that with apps. Oh, yeah. And yeah. place it in rooms. So as far as interior design, goes augment, augmented reality is changing that world but they say it's going to change everything it's oh, going to be the new you know how when we first got computers there was a technology shift forward <laughs> they say that this one is going to be the next technology shift forward and of course figure out what stocks to invest in <laughs> that that not not just apple because apple leads everything but that the, the tech, the stocks that are, or businesses that are affected by the augmented reality. So an example was putting the chair in the, um, in the room and seeing what you would, it, right in the store, I mean, you look, or not in the oh, store, yeah, but well, you go yeah. online, you find an orange chair and you say, okay, I wanna see what that orange chair looks like in my room, then the, the company that is affected by putting the orange chair in the room, that's the stock to invest in. So not just the big ones, which are making the changes, but Facebook is supposed to be really making an all out effort to bring that forward in their world. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I don't know what you're, you know, I hear what you're saying, Michelle, and I think about it. But I, if I could, if I lose, you know, like all this mess that I have in my hands right now, <laughs> if I would lose that, I mean, I'm wearing a glove so it doesn't get on my hand. You know, but yeah, in the same that, that's respect, what, that was I love shot, it. The future, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to lose this, but I, yeah, I understand. We're going to go and make a smaller footprint in the world. We're going to have less toxic products that we're using. We're going to have smaller homes because we won't need the space. Yeah, but Emily's Emily's situation is probably the best one because she used her iPad to basically structure. Is that correct, Emily? Mm -hmm. Structure yeah. your art, but you get enough until you says, "Okay, I got all of my little boo boos resolved. Now let's mm -hmm. paint it." And I think this is very smart. Then 
than doing what I'm doing with, you know, tons of that's, Isn't that pretty normal, though, for realistic artists? They, they do that. They use a, a, a or, or not just procreate. Now, you're the second person that I hear that's using procreate. So that's interesting. Yeah, um, it's, new to, it's new to me. Um, I, I, but like Michelle, what you were going, yeah, so if you had a, if you wanted to enlarge something or make something smaller or take something out of that drawing you were just holding up, it's just a very seamless way to kind of experiment um, before you go on to your making phase. Is it a, uh, is it available also on the large Mac? I don't think so. I think it's only on the iPad. It's only on um, the iPad, okay. I could be I could be mistaken though. So they let they let the one go on the uh, on the large mics with you do you use Photoshop or Illustrators or you you come by? Yeah, we use something called uh, Light Lightroom on the Mac, but that's wow. that's okay, just now, what now you got me. See, I'm old, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, we've actually just uh, bought, we've just transitioned to the, to the Mac. So still learning some of those programs. So. Oh, yeah, but it's easy. It's and how do you feel about that transition from, from PC to Mac? Because my husband's thinking of getting a Mac and mm -hmm. I've always been a PC person. So it's like, it's like, <laughs> oh, oh no, we share some, you know, Microsoft Office and you yeah. know, all that. So I'm yeah. thinking. Oh, I, I think it, for us, it was a good choice. It's just easier to, everything just works together so well. Um, so, you know, if we take a picture that we are interested in using for reference on our phone when we're out and then we airdrop it to the Mac or put it on the iPad, it's just, it's all very easy versus like kind of emailing to ourselves and downloading yeah. it. Um, I think it's, yeah. it that's needs a Processes. That's well. that's what I've heard now through from several people is just the the communication between devices is seamless. Yes. When it comes yeah. to Apple, and I've been an Android and PC girl my whole entire life, and I'm like, oh, the you fact know? that I would not have to like I wouldn't have to worry about all that extra. Oh, yeah. Be nice. It's just now, uh, can you yeah. transfer? Were you able to transfer all your files, everything you've saved on the PC? Were you able to transfer it over to the Mac easily? I, I didn't really have files saved there, actually. I only was saving onto a drive, a Google Drive. So it I didn't have that that challenge because everything was already on the drive. Um yeah. yeah. I was always PC before this too, but yeah. I feel like I'm not going to go back. <laughs> so. yeah, like your original paintings in your large format that you need to submit for catalogs, like in museums. Um, yeah. they, that what I'm, I've got all those files that I've been using and yeah. I wonder if I shift to the Mac, I can't, I can't just send them to myself because um, every, when you send them, they they lose their, you know, it's like copying a picture. You can't copy those paintings, those images, because they lose something in the copying. Well, it's, it's depending how you save your file. I mean, yeah. a JPEG will open in anything. Open, open into a, uh, a CGI or anything else like that. Um, uh, Photoshop will be compatible between the two. You just have to know how to save your file as an original one. Uh, I use Adobe Elements and, okay. and they're already saved, you know, from, you know, all these years of painting. So we're talking hundreds of paintings that I'm still using. Um, so how would I, I don't know, you know, that that's a, that's a big question. How did you create there's, the original file? <laughs> there's definitely a way if you want to oh yeah <laughs> sounds like it would be a complicated experience though <laughs> nah. Nah. Yeah, many change in general is a complicated experience so I, I think that's that's the hard part is going oh do i want to designate time and effort and sanity mm -hmm. yeah. to do this so i i, I get it i get it because i am I'm, I'm very much the like uh 
I'm just going to stick with my inconvenience of having to email myself the pictures so that I can upload it on my computer. Um, well, I just plug my Apple into my computer and it and it uploads them. Yeah. So I didn't. I don't have to email them to myself anymore. That's good. Uh, they, you know, through iTunes. iCloud. Yeah. yeah. It it I does love, that. Yeah. I don't send it to the cloud because I don't. I keep them on my computer because I think I'll lose again. I'll lose the image, parts of the image. Like the resolution of the image? Yes, that's what, you know, my printer is in um, an out west and they they have, I had to buy a, a special device so that the color, so, so Emily, this is Emily. She's in Vancouver. Oh, hello, Emily. Hi. She says Z instead of Z as well. Z. Yeah. Well, we do say Z as well. <laughs> yes. Good to meet you. Yes. In her work. She's a uh, she does cityscapes and her husband does the aerial of of Vancouver. Oh. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And she's yeah. very no, successful. She, right? is, she is <laughs> a um, she is not part of the come on the well. <laughs> Well, because we she's she'll be Canadian, so hey. See how he said that. He says, whatever. Oh no, <laughs> not part of the Commonwealth. Well, bless your heart. Hey, it works. Your heart. It works. As long as the Queen is alive, we okay. Oh, so Emily you. Peter is my muse, so he mm -hmm. he uh, he comes up with ideas that I have learned to quickly write them down because if I say half hour later, what did you just, what did you say? He's like, well, well, I don't know. <laughs> and it was the best idea. And uh -huh. so off, I mean, he was the one that, that met the right people to put me into the whole Europe world of, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy yeah. with that. Um, and that actually happened in Monte Carlo. So you never know someone he met that said yes we will like to invite her and boom the world changed for me that way it just you know it's sometimes it's just one little comment if her husband the two of them work together and i don't know who is he your muse and you're his muse i think so we really we work together like in every every way um but but when you say you work together that's mean that you can uh, he can come to you and says, what should I do with this? I got a block on that one or vice versa, or he's doing his stuff, you're doing your stuff, and let's talk when we get dinner. So in two ways. So the administrative stuff we can each work on together separately. He can photograph our art. I can update our websites, stuff like that. Now, as far as the actual art making goes, yeah. Yeah. we work, we are independent. We, our process is independent. Uh, however, when we were able to give each other feedback and we're also able to help each other through uh, any issues that we're having with our painting. So if we're kind of looking and feeling like maybe something doesn't look right. We have the other person to take a look and kind of talk through it together. And I would think that you're able to also do what we do is when we would we go to the shows or, or exhibitions, things that we're in. Um, that we can meet people and say, well, what did you think of so-and-so? Or did you meet this person? Or did you meet that person? Do you feel they could, you know, we yeah. blend together so that you've got two people paying mm -hmm. attention instead of just one person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, that that is that is valuable. I mean, Michelle, are you and Nancy, do you guys operate that way? steer people towards it. Uh, we try to, I let her do her stuff. She let me do my stuff because, hey, maybe you say, and you know, and I, I am not very good in that kind of stuff. And when it's finished, we talk about during the time you do your stuff, I do mine. Uh, because no, I don't know, each one's got their own ideas and she's doing totally different thing than I do. Uh, although she's been very helpful to me with developing concepts and things like that. But, you know, she's coming a little oh, wow. Bye, hey, dear. Peter. Bye. Bye. Uh, but we try to stay away from, let's paint together today, you know, let's yeah. draw. Yeah. Although I wouldn't mind to go and having one day of 
just drawing, you know, and the pads and with this, but otherwise we got tendencies to do that and it's not very good. Mm -hmm. And I did a research a couple of weeks ago, we're not too sure if I have a lecture about that. And it was uh, one of the example was uh, Seymour Quartz, the illustrator, and, and uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, because I want to mention her, graphic designers, and they divorced twice. And now they're doing their stuff and they don't, I don't want to hear about your stuff. I don't want to, you don't want to hear about my stuff. It was kind of odd. So they don't they don't work well together. It's safe to say That's that. Exactly. And it's it's happened a lot. It's very, very difficult. And I'm very envious. Well, I shouldn't complain, but you're very lucky. Well, uh, Mia anyway. and John work well together, don't they? Good point. Gee, uh -huh. Yes. That, what, I missed that. What was Mia that? and John, because Mia and John work oh. well together because they've done some collaborative pieces. Um, yes. Mia, Mia Bergeron is his daughter and she's based out of Chattanooga and her husband. Husband, oh yes, they're that, married. Literally he is a sculptor, but both are, um, both are oil Banner. painters and realism is kind of like their, uh, I would say hyper-realism too, because they're very, um, yeah, they're just, but in the last piece, though, she moved to that surrealism, or was was that last piece she did with the three Buddha? Were they? Uh, uh, no, I don't know if it was. Was that the piece. augmented reality? Yes, and it's it's gone. Uh, matter of fact, I think uh, she was over the weekend to uh, not over the weekend. She's on the way back from uh, DC right now. Yeah. Uh, she got terrible time to get there. It was to deliver a a huge painting at. Uh, Principal gallery in Alexandria. So I don't know. Uh, I think the other one was gone. Yes. And I, I noticed that with Justin last night that he's really looking, he has that really powerful spiritual presence. Yeah. Yes. And it was very peaceful. Night. His energy is so clear. This gentleman, his energy was so clear. I kept staring at him because uh -huh. I, was, I, he was, I was looking right through him and i remember being able to do that in ashrams you know when back in the day when we were in the ashrams um that is a really powerful place to be so spiritually he's in a clear present moment which which you know in the old days they call them old souls but you know it's just it's just that he's in the present moment basically yeah. but um, <laughs> but his art He's very realistic in his art, um, and I mean, like he could do, for, he could work for Disney. But then he had a, had a piece that I yeah. love that looked like very Dali esque. So it it seems like he is wanting. There was actually another piece that was very abstracted. So he's wanting to find that sweet spot where he belongs right. between realism, hyper realism, yes. and yeah. Yeah. And abstraction, which for him, it feels like a comfortable landing zone, would, is surrealism. Well, and then Emily's kind of doing that with the one piece that she had uh, has a, on the wall that you have the uh, the uh, neon light attachment to. Yeah. So trying to, um, it's kind of the same thought process, trying to bring two worlds True. together. Yes, to and try to tell, discover tell the story of it, yeah. right? Yeah. So, well, on that note, Emily, if you'll tell the world where they can find your art, website, Instagram, how we follow you, because um, we want to help build you up and um, share contacts. So let everyone know. Oh, thank you. So well, all very easy. It's all just my name. So <laughs> emilycentus.com. Um, my name, Emily, has an IE at the end. So E-M-I-L-I-E. <laughs> Uh, fan twos, F A N T U Z. And also, my Instagram is the same, just Emily Fan twos, and my husband, Mike Fan twos. Um, and Facebook, you can just, my Facebook's a little different. It's Emily Fan twos Artworks. So okay. you can find me in any of those places. And on my website, I have a newsletter sign up. I send it out four times a year with each season. And I try to include a little bit 
more if you're interested in my work and my process and things that are happening um you can sign up for that if you want very cool it was it was, it was wonderful it was and then a, if anybody's in vancouver visiting where would they go to see your studio yeah so it's in uh, the mount pleasant neighborhood of vancouver um and on my website you'll find a, a studio visit appointments and it shows where it's at and how to it's sign up <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. So I thank you for your time today. We um, appreciate you being here. It was wonderful to um, have a conversation and also see your work. A little bit of a sneak peek before it gets into the gallery. I think we got a treat on that one. Um, and then what Michelle is working on and his, his what, what did you show us? Oh, that was just a thumbnail. It's very okay. losing things because I have a hard time to chew and walk at the same time. So when I talk, I cannot walk. And, walk. <laughs> and then, Maria, um, show us what you're doing behind you, just real quick. Just oh, I just, um, I just, oh, oh, I just, I destroyed okay. the. Um, I I was trying to do my version of realism, and that didn't work out very well. So. I was like, and eh, we're going to throw paint onto it. Well, it takes a lot of courage to take the oh. risk to obliterate something completely and that you just did. So yeah, that, and, uh, that took all work. week it sat there across my desk and I'm like, I just don't like you more and more every day. So no. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's good when um, you had it. You would you work on it harder. So yeah. hey Maria, if you, and if next you have week, a minute, I'm gonna call you after the show. Is that okay? I have a question. Me? Yeah. Are okay. you running into a meeting or you have a minute? No, okay, I have good. a meeting at 1130, so I got some time. Um, okay, cool. uh, and next oh, week yeah. I will I will, uh, uh, I will share my screen to see where your painting is because it is beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And Emily, oh, thank you. Thank you everyone thank for you. watching. Um, this will be available on our YouTube and Facebook. So, all right. Thanks. Oh, cool. Bye. Thank you very much.